Today in beautiful eastern Michoacan, right outside Zitacuro, Aunt Gabriela invites me over to her country kitchen to teach me how to turn fresh cilantro and spinach into a light, fresh, and healthy mole verde that will delight your taste buds with its zesty green flavors. El día de hoy vamos a cocinar un tradicional mole verde. Mole verde. Mole verde. ¿Y vamos. de dónde viene esta receta? De mi abuela a mi mamá y de mi mamá hacia nosotros. In the heart of Zitácuaro's vibrant mercado, we find Gabriela's mother's restaurant, Doña Caro, which has been serving traditional Eastern Michoacán specialties for over 50 years. When Gabriela's mother passed away, she retired from her career as a teacher to carry on her family's proud legacy, Cocina Tradicional. You have to try the chiles rellenos. You have to try the mole rojo. And of course, you have to try the mole verde. Oh man, that's so good. I could just drink this sauce by itself. Mm. Anyways, back to the recipe. To make mole verde, you'll need peanuts, sesame seeds, which in Spanish have a name that is difficult for me to pronounce. Ajonjolí. Ajonjolí. Eso suena francés. Ajonjolí. Ajonjolí. <laughs> you'll also need garlic, onion, green tomatoes, serrano chile peppers, cilantro, and fresh spinach. Espinacas frescas, tienen que estar frescas. Estas son de la región. Estas están sembradas aquí en los alrededores. Uh -huh. Le llaman espinaca criolla. Okay. Este mole verde es muy importante para nosotros porque era la comida tradicional que se preparaba en casa. Es increíble. Te vas a chupar los dedos. Yo uh -huh. sé que te vas a chupar los dedos. Out here in the country, we're going to cook like our ancestors used to, with firewood. Gabriela says that firewood and smoke are the right combination to bring out the traditional flavors that we're looking for. En ese tiempo, el gas para la familia incluía gran gasto. Mm. Y si cocinábamos con leña... Gratis. Sí. Claro. Solo un poco de... Sí se extraña porque el sabor es diferente. Uh -huh. Sí se extraña porque es muy, muy diferente el sabor. Es mucho más rico con la leña, uh -huh. con el tipo de cazuelas, cazuelas de barro. Es mucho mejor, uh -huh. es mucho mejor porque cambia el sabor de la comida. Yeah. Guys, today I'm learning to cook with firewood. I don't have a lot of experience in it. I have more experience with the microwave. That could be said for sure. And uh, we're getting old fashioned today. Whenever I cook with firewood, I'm gonna start wearing a scuba mask because all that smoke is getting in my eyes. I can barely see anything. If I had a scuba mask, everything would be way better. Y el primer paso es... Dorar el ajonjoli y el cacahuate. We put the sesame seeds and the peanuts in the same clay bowl. Then Gabriela toasted them over the fire for a good 10 minutes or so. When they're close to ready, you'll hear them start to crackle and pop. ¿Y cómo sabemos cuando ya terminamos? Cuando el ajonjolí empieza a brincar dentro de la cazuela, salta como palomitas. ¿Espera más tiempo? Un poquito más de tiempo, nada más a que empiece. Porque te juro, si yo estuviera allá, yo hubiera brincado hace mucho tiempo. Oh. <laughs> yo, guys, normally when I'm cooking with grandmas in Mexico, Mexico can be a very loud country. When I'm in the city, I have to deal with all these city noises, car alarms, radios. But now we're out in the country, in Michoacán, and I have to deal with country noises. You'd think it'd be quiet out here, but there's some really great country noise go noises going on. There's roosters crowing. I mean, I thought that was a morning thing. There's dogs are talking to each other. I think I even heard a donkey somewhere. So I... Now let's meet the meat. You can use whatever protein you'd like, but Gabriela prefers to use this delicious cut, espinazo de puerco. El caldo que salga de esta carne es el caldo que nosotros vamos a utilizar para moler las oh, hierbas. Oh, eso es un muy buen secreto del mole. Don't forget to add a good amount of salt to the water before you boil it. Gabriela told me I had to drink some local mezcal while we cooked. 
They really should call this alcohol fire water because at 110 proof, it burns as it slides down your throat. That's a cien por ciento. Creo que eso es tan fuerte es lo que usan para limpiar las heridas, no? <laughs> Dump the toasted sesame and peanut into your blender. Then add some fresh garlic and onion. Next, scoop out some of that yummy pork broth and pour it in the blender. I think you know where this is going. Then, we fry the mixture in hot oil. Next, we'll cover the green tomatoes and serrano chiles with pork broth and blend them in the blender. La segunda parte? Cilantro. Cilantro, espinaca. Cilantro. The fresh cilantro and spinach give this mole lots of vitamins. Notice that I'm drinking mezcal, aka fire water, in the background. Now we are starting to see that dramatic green color that this mole is famous for. Okay, let's add the pork to the mole so it can soak up some of that flavor. Please note that the pork is already cooked, not raw. Let's ask Gabriela how that mole turned out. Que Eric se lleve un buen sabor de México, pero sobre todo de la cocina tradicional michoacana. Wow, this mole looks amazing. I cannot wait to try it. Guys, this is really special moment. I'm about to eat a green verde. Uh, a green verde. I'm about to eat a green verde. <laughs> How did I come up with this stuff? It's his fault. He made me drink the, the mezcal. What makes mole verde so special is it's fresh and a lot of other moles are made of dried kind of stale ingredients that are fried, deep fried. But mole verde is a lot healthier because it's got fresh cilantro, it's got fresh spinach, it's got fresh chiles, and it's got fresh tomatoes. So uh, let's check this out, just the flavor of it. I like how the, uh, the spiciness is like, it's not there at first and then you think you're in the cool, you think you're in the clear, you think it's not spicy and then wham, like 10 seconds later, you get hit by the after spice. So there is a lot of uh, serrano chile in here and it's making a little bit picante, we would say here in Mexico. Voy a ver, probar sobre el, solo el mole sin uh, carne al principio. Vamos a ver. Mmm. Mm. Qué sabor. Qué sabor. Qué rica herencia te dejo tu mamá y tu abuela. En serio. Es delicioso. Muchas gracias. Me encantó. Increíble. Bueno. ¿Aprendiste wow. la receta? Sí. Ya lo tengo aquí. Y aquí, y también vamos a ponerlo aquí en el estómago. Es completamente ligero. Es tan saludable, podríamos hacer una dieta de mole verde sí, con ¿verdad? carnitas. Sí. Así yo perdí 20 kilos. Gracias, mole verde. <laughs> Guys, this has been a really special recipe. And I want to say that I feel like this is a rich heritage for this woman to learn to make this mole from her family, to learn from her grandmother, from her mother. I mean, what could be better, like inheriting a ring, inheriting some furniture, inheriting some money? This recipe is more valuable than all of these things because with this recipe, she's able to keep her family healthy and happy. She's going to teach it to her daughters. We're going to teach it to their daughters. This is real heritage right here. I want to celebrate this recipe by eating some more. Thank you so much for tuning into this episode of Cooking with Grandmas. I'll see you on the next episode. Signing out from Eastern Michoacan, I'm your host, Eric Kennedy.